Because when I get the title, I'll call you. She got title. Yeah. And Quinn trusted the guy, right? Yeah. The guy, I sent I sent that NCRS guy. Yeah, I think I, yeah. yeah. Didn't work out so good. Actually, it worked out fine, but it wasn't a good guy. So he tried to sell the buy the car, and she called them. She told them I have a title of who's going to come down and look at the car. Other people are interested. The two neighbors on both sides wanted the car. The air conditioning guy that serviced the central air wanted the car. So we flew down on a Friday. We draw, drive to the house, like 30, 40 minutes to the lady's house. We get there in Maryland, um, Hyattsville, Maryland. She can't find the key to the garage. So on my iPad, I picture the Quentin and, Steve and, and Chris trying to look in the garage. We can't see nothing. I'm like this, looking in. She goes, I can't find the key. I don't know what I did with the key, blah, blah, blah. And she starts telling us a story how the uncle worked for the CIA and was poisoned in Southeast Asia in the late 60s. And we were like, yeah, a guy died in Vietnam, the whole story, yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes, yeah, but his brother kept the car in the parents' garage its whole life. The car was bought two miles from their house. But we don't believe it. We're just going, okay, the key. we got to get in the garage. She gets the house key. We go in the house, and there's all these, like, awards from the CIA in memory of this guy and the services. So obviously she was telling the truth. But she wouldn't let me take any pictures of any of the awards. She was like, no, no, it's not right. We get the key. We open the garage. It's a dusty car. It's there. She said the NCRS judge started the car. I told him not to, but he started it anyway. So we pushed it out. Chris put gas in the car. The car started right up. We were pretty happy about that. And, uh, and that's how we ended up with the car. Um, sent it up here, and I've been here cleaning it, and every day Chris yells at me, soap and water, don't do this, don't touch that, what are you doing? <laughs> don't, leave it original, don't you understand? My first thing was I wanted to paint the car, and the two of them were like, you can never paint this car. <laughs> <laughs> that was in Maryland, they go, I go, what do you mean? It's a disgusting thing. We were buying it together to sell it, and I actually liked it, and they were like, listen, if you want it, you buy the car. So I, I paid for the car, and that's how I ended up with it here. And the car had undercoating on it, but I can't tell you the thickness and disgusting that hood was. The hole underneath the car was covered in tar. It was horrible. I wanted to clean it off. The tire cover's in the corner there. It's original spare tire. So I take the tire cover. Two days I sit in that corner with a torch and a plastic scraper, scraping it off. Kerosene, scraping. Came out pretty good, but I said, I can't do the whole car like this. I just can't do it. Somebody told me dry ice. I put a piece of dry ice on something, and then you hit it with a hammer. It didn't work. I tried it hard. I looked up the dry ice blaster, which I told you guys at the meeting, and the guy had never done it. He does monuments and stuff like that. He came and we blasted the car. It was a mess in the shop. The whole shop was covered. It was interesting, to say the least. Yeah. I, I, I would have liked to have seen that. We built the whole thing around the car, plastic. We hung it from the ceiling, but the dust was everywhere. If you have an outside lift, it's the move, you know? Yeah. Not a worry, just pile it up on the floor and scrape it up. So we cleaned the car, I lift the car, I'll show you the underneath of the car. I think it's nice because the more I clean it, I find all these little markings, you know, the paint markings, numbers. Pounds of ice. What? A thousand pounds of ice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like hundred pounds of dry ice. <laughs> little chips. Wow. Containers. And it didn't finish the job either. I should have had more because we could have done more I stuff. Ran. We ran out of ice. I would have done more work. So now I got a little hand work to do on it. Uh, Just watch that door, Joe. Okay. Well, I got it. I got it. Hey. You got it. <laughs> Hey, Joe, before you go through that, uh, how many miles on the car? 41,000. Wow. What are, what are the options? Uh, it, it's actually a low option car. It's a non positive rear car. It's a four speed. It's 250 horse. Obviously, the guy didn't buy a race car, just bought a car to drive around. There's no so other brakes? No. 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 So what? And listen, it must have fixed. I, I was enjoying it. I was standing because no power brakes. It's a lot of fun. So you guys all know you know me talk about I have a I don't know what I'm not all right for it. But on the half shaft, you can see the tar on a half shaft, right? So that tar was on the whole car. Jesus. It's oh, horrible. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the blast. Wow. Look how nice that came out. 
And the funny part is, this car is supposed to have French locks on it. There are no French locks on the car. So I go buy the French locks and I, I'm going to put them on, and I realize they never had French locks on this car because the bolts are undercoated from the, the dealership. So they were supposed to change at a certain point, but obviously they didn't change at that point. But there were no French locks and they were never on this car because some of the bolts, which I left the undercoating on for that reason, shows you that those bolts were never off the car. Um, a couple of other things. The shocks are original on a car. Holy shit. The brake lines are original on a car. They wow. had undercoating on them. Now they do not. So they stayed pretty pristine, but you can feel the undercoating is still up here. So those are the original lines. You know what amazes me? The rubber. Yeah. Think yeah. about how old that rubber yeah. is. But it was covered in that crap, you know? This whole car was covered in that crap. I mean, everything about it was covered. But look I at mean, the trailing arms, though. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I felt bad because they're not in bare steel, but I put some uh, chemical on it that won't allow it to rust for a while. So That's crazy. Look that. at that, Johnny. The Hold dates on, on the shops are all here. Like I said, this tar is ridiculous on here, but the tar was... I have pictured on my iPad underneath the car. It was disgusting. Um, on the frame, the numbers are still on the frame up here, but not all of them because some of it rusted. Okay. I took pictures of the numbers on the frame, that original that I want to put on. I mean, to me, this is, look, the original tape is still on the, on the shims. Oh, look at that. Tar, but I, I didn't make them clean that area because Chris said you got to leave the tape. Don't remove the tape on the bottom. Holy of the shit. I mean, these were covered. I, I'm going to have to clean them a little bit more. But you could see where the guy blasted them. They're pretty good shape. So this hole underneath this car? Everything under this car. The exhaust is new because the other one was rusted out right down the middle. I guess condensation over all the years in the garage. Um, there are markings on... Are oh, mark so even the drive shaft still has the some stuff on it. markings on the drive shaft, the green and red paint. Oh, look at that. There. Right? Yes. That's, that's cool. Take a picture of that. I mean, you can see where some of the, the undercoating I didn't get to. Back here, there's a marking on the drive shaft, too. I think somewhere here is a good... What, like the balancing? Um, no, I think it was balancing strike.